Hello friends, in this video we would be doing the various tests for the identification of silver ions. These are the tests which we are planning to do in this session. You can pause the video and see all the tests or write them down if you want to. For all these reactions we will be using a 0.1 normal solution of silver nitrate. First of all we see the reaction with dilute hydrochloric acid that is around 3 molar hydrochloric acid. In the test tube, I have taken 3 milliliters of the N by 10 solution of silver nitrate. Into that was added few drops of dilute 3 molar or even 2 molar hydrochloric acid can be used. Immediately you see the development of a thick white precipitate which many of the Indian textbooks refer to as curd-like or yogurt-like consistency. It is so dense that it quickly settles down to the bottom of the test tube. Some amount of this precipitate was then taken in another test tube and then concentrated 36% hydrochloric acid was added to it. You will notice how the silver chloride precipitate which was formed dissolves and the solution turns clear. What is happening here is excess of hydrochloric acid dissolves the silver chloride precipitate forming a soluble dichloroargentate complex. Now here is the clear solution of the dichloroargentate complex. However, on dilution of this complex with water, the equilibrium shift to the left and precipitate of silver chloride will reappear. Now we take some amount of that same white silver chloride precipitate and into that we add ammonia solution in excess and shake it well. The white precipitate dissolves and a clear solution is obtained and this is due to the formation of soluble diammonium argentum complex. Dilute hydrochloric acid or even nitric acid will neutralize the excess ammonia in this complex and the precipitate reappears because the equilibrium shifts to the left side. A point to be noted is that the diamoin argentum complex should be quickly acidified and neutralized because if it stays for a longer period of time there is a chance of formation of silver nitride which explodes readily even in the wet form. Now for one more thing with this precipitate, the white precipitate of silver chloride was taken in the beaker and saturated solution of sodium thiosulfate was added. The precipitate dissolves giving a clear solution due to the formation of the complex dithiosulfato-argentate. If you keep this precipitate outside, that is a silver chloride precipitate, the UV radiation decomposes it to produce a grey-black color of silver metal and silver oxides. Moving on to the reaction with ammonia and sodium hydroxide solution. Both of them gives the same result so I just coupled them together in one video shoot. Here you can see the formation of a brown colored precipitate of silver oxide when sodium hydroxide solution or ammonia solution is added to a solution of silver nitrate. Now we take some amount of that brown precipitate and into that was added excess of ammonia solution. The precipitate will re-dissolve in excess of ammonia solution due to the formation of the soluble complex diamine argentum. Next we move on to the reaction with hydrogen sulfide gas. Here in the test tube we have the silver nitrate solution and in the round bottom flask hydrogen sulfide gas is being generated by the addition of hydrochloric acid to sodium sulfide. You immediately see the bubbles of hydrogen sulfide passing through the test tube. You see the formation of a black colored precipitate and this is the silver sulfide.
Now we take this precipitate of silver sulfide in a test tube and into that few milliliters of concentrated nitric acid was added and the test tube was heated on a flame. Hot concentrated nitric acid decomposes the silver sulfide and sulfur remains in the form of a white precipitate. You will see the evolution of nitrogen dioxide gas in this reaction. After the reaction, you can see the contents of the test tube. You will see a white precipitate of sulfur, but there is no more black precipitate of silver sulfide as everything got decomposed. Now, if we continue heating the test tube for a considerable amount of time, the sulfur is oxidized to sulfate and the precipitate of sulfur will also get disappeared and we will get a clear solution at last. The next is the reaction with potassium iodide solution. Here we have taken few milliliters of the n biton solution of silver nitrate in the test tube. Into that was added few milliliters of potassium iodide solution. Immediately you see a light yellow colored precipitate, a very faint yellow colored precipitate forming and this is the precipitate of silver iodide. Now we take some amount of that precipitate in a test tube and into that was added saturated solution of sodium thiosulfate. On mixing the contents of the test tube, the precipitate dissolves resulting in a clear solution due to the formation of the complex thiosulfato argentate. Now moving on to the reaction with potassium chromate. For that, we have a solution of potassium chromate which has a yellow color as you can see. In the test tube, we have the silver nitrate solution. On adding the potassium chromate, a bright red colored precipitate of silver chromate is formed. As usual, some amount of that red colored precipitate of silver chromate was taken in a test tube and then dilute nitric acid was added to it. You immediately see that the precipitate will get dissolved and the solution turns orange due to the formation of the dichromate. Now we take some amount of the red precipitate of silver chromate in the test tube and then we add few milliliters of ammonia solution. On adding the ammonia solution, the precipitate dissolves due to the formation of the complex diamine argentum and the solution acquires a yellow color due to the formation of the chromate anion. Now we see the reaction with sodium carbonate. Here we have the solution of silver nitrate in the test tube. Into that was added a solution of sodium carbonate. Immediately you see a white or a yellowish white precipitate of silver carbonate. Now we take the precipitate of silver carbonate in a test tube and then start heating it. When heating, the precipitate decomposes and a brown colored precipitate will be formed and that is the silver oxide. Now this is the silver oxide which was formed after heating the silver carbonate. Into that we add some nitric acid and you immediately see a fissing going on and then the solution turns clear. Moving on to the reaction with disodium hydrogen phosphate. For that we have the solution of silver nitrate and into that was added the disodium hydrogen phosphate solution and you see a white colored precipitate of silver phosphate. Now 
Nitric acid and ammonia solution will dissolve the precipitate due to the formation of the complex. Moving on to the last reaction which is the reaction with the rhodanin reagent. First of all we make the rhodanin reagent solution. For that we have taken around 0.2 grams of rhodanin which has a dark orange color in this beaker. And then we add 10 milliliters of acetone. Rhodanin is highly soluble in acetone and the resultant solution has an orange red color similar to a dichromate solution. Here we have taken the solution of silver nitrate here and then we add few milliliters of the 2 molar nitric acid into it. On top of that was added the rhodanin reagent and immediately upon addition of the reagent you see the formation of a deep red color and this indicates the presence of silver ions. So that's all in this video. These are my Patreon supporters who are financially supporting me so that I am able to purchase new chemicals and equipments required for doing new videos. You can also support me via Patreon or PayPal. The links of both of them are given in the description. If you are new to this channel, do click the subscribe button and the bell button for notifications. Thank you.